flaming live. Hey, what's up guys? Aaron here. So the day has finally come to build mountain bike trails in the backyard. We bought this property about a year ago. We're on almost six acres, so not a ton of land, but enough to where ever since we bought it, I was out here walking around, scoping it out, what I would do. Today's day, actually it's technically day three because I've spent a few days out here walking around, scouting out where I want to put stuff. And then I've spent about a day and a half raking leaves to kind of start to generally form a trail. Um, so I just thought it'd be cool to show you along. This place is definitely going to progress as we go and probably get pretty wild because we have some super steep vertical here. But for now, starting plan is to basically build a kind of what will be a cross country loop that'll kind of wind through the entire property. Um, so that way it'll be up trails and kind of connectors to anything I want to build down the road. So not the funnest stuff to build right now, but it's necessary. So building trails since I was a little kid has been probably like the funnest thing in the world. Like I could spend all day, every day in the hills digging and Lauren always gives me crap because I just like sprint dig. So I come in at the end of the day and I'm completely toast and I've got like injuries and stuff happening because I just like to get down. So I try to uh, limit that during the season because I legitimately have had some like tendonitis injuries and stuff from the digging that I do. And, uh, but we're off season now, so it's game on. So yeah, for me, I guess anybody that wants to build a new trail, first thing you need is a good set of tools. So let's cover that quickly. It was raining today here in Tennessee. So I got my rain jacket here, but it's December and it's also like 65 degrees. So right now it's not raining, it's just humid. I'm sweating a lot, so we took that off. This has been my best friend the last few days. This here rake, it'd be cool to have one that doesn't have a wooden handle because I like to use tools. Every tool I have is a multi-use tool. So this could be a rake or it could be a tree branch breaker, which is what I was doing here. Um, so yeah, you got a good set of gloves. These are mine. They're completely toast. I've worn holes in half the fingers in them. And then some cutting tools. So got these puppers, puppies. I don't know if these are called loppers, what are they called? But uh, there's a ton of different sizes. You can get some real big dog ones of these too, so you can cut bigger stuff. I only have these, so this is what I use. I've got a, what would it be, a sawzall or a reciprocating saw. And uh, I use this on bigger stuff. If you really want to get nuts, you could use a chainsaw, but I'm trying not to cut anything that's bigger than maybe three, four inches, so I'm trying not to disturb it too much. And then some sort of, I guess what would be considered like a rogue hoe. I don't know if that's a brand, um, I actually have one on order right now. It's just not here yet. That's normally what I use. I think I got this at just a regular hardware store. It's called the Trooper. It's kind of like a firefighting tool. These things are about as good as you could possibly ever get. So the rogue hose are definitely sick. So that's kind of the main tools and then obviously shovels and stuff. But right now I'm just clearing leaves and trail and trying to figure out where we're going. So this has been my kit the last couple of days. So there you go. When I start looking at where I'm going to build a trail, I own all this property, so I don't have to consider really anything else. So we'll just get that out of the way. And I try to work with the terrain as much as I possibly can, which kind of does two things. I think it makes the trails funner because they're more natural. And number two, they're just way less digging because you don't have to bench cut and shelf like everything. So I spend a lot of time looking for kind of like where's the spots, especially on this property because it's all on a hill and we're basically, I'm just traversing back and forth on like the steepest part of the hill, trying to find where I can do this the easiest without having like a mile long bench cut. I try to work with natural trails. So a lot of times it's like natural animal trails have kind of like beat in like little paths here and there. And then over the years, it creates like a little flat spot. So it kind of gives you like a natural shelf to work off of. And this whole hillside is kind of a mix of like natural rock shelves and then stuff like this. Another tip, if you're gonna cut stuff down and not dig it out, uh, cut as low as you possibly can because once the trail starts to erode, you'll have a stump sticking up, which turns into a pedal catcher, which turns into death. All right, so here's another section that's a pretty cool example of like just what naturally happens and what I like to look for. So we're kind of looking at this traverse trail 
And there's two big trees that have fallen over here, which I'm gonna go across on my other trail that I dug out down there. But it's kind of created this natural, like when you come through here, like a natural berm that you can kind of do something cool without having to dig a ton. And there's kind of a natural little shelf up here as well in the side of this hill. So this trail, I want to make it uh, to where you can ride it either direction since it's I'm the only one riding here and it's on my property. You don't have to worry about like running into anybody. So I'm trying to make this, my two goals on this first trail are to make it as long as possible, um, like mileage wise. So if you're doing like XE laps and I want to just come out here and do a quick workout, especially when it's pouring rain, I don't want to like load up my bikes drive 30 minutes, ride in the mud, load all the mud back into my van and drive home. I can just blast out here, do some laps, get a good workout in and be done with it. So I wanna make this trail as long as I can um, and I wanna make it multi-directional. So to be able to climb it both directions, you can't build something that's like so steep that you can't get back up. Um, and kind of the plan on this, cause I like gnarlier trails is to, you're probably gonna need to ride it on like a full cross country bike that climbs really well or an e-bike if you're riding an enduro bike on this trail. It's gonna, you're gonna suffer. <laughs> this is another cool thing if you can find when you're looking for trails. Um, out here, a lot of these trees fall over and this thing pretty much just does 90% of the work for you as like a huge bench cut. Um, if you rake down into here to the dirt and you just stack a little bit up against the backside of this log, this whole shelf is like supported. So this is the type of stuff that I look for. And it's just like really cool feature to have on a trail. So I try to find stuff like this as much as I possibly can to kind of incorporate either into the trail that you ride over or next to it, because it just makes a vibe. So, and it does a lot of the work for you. Mid dig update. Mid -dig update. We're here hacking. Quite pleased with myself. Another thing I try to do when I build trails is try to limit the amount of vertical walls you have in a bench cut. So if you have to bench cut and try to blend it a little bit into the hillside, because if you cut straight walls everywhere when it rains, that's the stuff that starts to erode and fall down. So another thing to keep in mind, and it makes your trail like kind of fun because you can ride up on the edges of it in spots. We got inside hop over the route which I'm notoriously kind of sketchy at. So once you hit that about five times, knock the bark off, it's gonna be like a wet PVC pipe. And then it's gonna start claiming lives. I'll suck all my friends into it. I'm like, this section's sick, watch this. And then I'll bunny hop it and they hit it with the front wheel and <laughs> stack it up. Probably come back and dig this berm out later. It's like when I was a kid, you come home from school dig till dark every single day and then do homework. We had good crews growing up too in the neighborhood that were all shredders. So we all dug every day. It was so fun. These trails are not ready to ride yet, but you can't film a digging video and then not ride anything, so. But here we go. Totally like tuck the front. Woo! Oh, that was tight. Yeah. Oh, so slippery. Grab <laughs> mud on the tires. It's cool to have this literally like 100 feet from my house. <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna be cool once it's all done. Got a lot more work to do, but I like it. It's like pretty tight. Yeah. All right guys, so 
there you go. Uh, pretty much day one, building backyard mountain bike trails. We're just getting going. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, comment down below. If you have topics or things you want me to cover, because we definitely got a lot of ideas and we're gonna get rolling with these videos now pretty soon. So this was something I was already working on and I thought it was gonna kind of turn into something cool. So I figured might as well film the early process and we'll see what it turns into down the road. But uh, I love digging trails, love riding bikes, obviously. And to have both in your backyard is definitely the dream setup. So um, yeah, you guys have a local mountain bike club, trails where you can build legally. Highly recommend. You'll meet some cool people, build some cool trails, some fun experiences. And uh, for me, there's very few things in life that I enjoy more than being out in the mountains or in the woods, uh, throwing dirt around. So hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.